welcome back and say hello to the glorious slab of monochrome plastic that is the Toshiba T2110 a monochrome 486DX475 so quite a powerful 486 with a mono screen no sound card and uh, <laughs> yeah a bit of an anachronism this and kind of a weird one so this video is just going to be taking the thing to bits seeing what's wrong with it and then as you can see um, it did work and I've got a few bits and bobs installed so I'll do a few more videos just exploring what this thing's like and uh, seeing what you can do with the 486 with uh, a mono screen and no sound <laughs> well sorry it has sound output it's got the PC speaker no good sound output so uh, yeah let, let's go through and have a look at this thing in the video so it's uh, not in bad condition uh, it has to be said all uh, all present and accounted for uh, a little bit grubby maybe so we'll see if we can clean it up real classic Toshiba look on this one So let's see uh, what the machine currently does. <laughs> so you've got quite an exciting whining noise which does go away. And that drive just ticking and whirring and ticking and whirring. Yeah, just spin up, spin down. Now this was sold as working, and I saw it booted into Windows. Uh, I think they were running 98 on it. But the drive now seems to be dead. Um, it was sent in a un an unpadded box. Um, so <laughs> I, I fear it's been battered to death. I'm surprised it's in as good a condition as it is. So first step is going to be to see if I can get that floppy drive going really. So I'm going to have to take the thing to bits. Now what is cool is that uh, it opens up uh, super easily. This thing is so maintainable. So if I just power this down, I've already got it partly into bits. I mean I would power it down if I could. Let's take the power up. It's got uh, no power brick, just plug mains voltage straight into it and somewhere inside is a power supply, which is unusual. So this is cool, you have these two uh, locking things, you pop them up and then you slide this bit forward. There you go, and then it flips up and gives you access to the battery which I've popped out. It's not leaking or anything but it doesn't seem to work at all so I wonder if I can refurb that. Um, and you've got the hard disk. There's a, there's a thing that holds this in, which I've already taken out in the end piece. Um, so, you know, I can pop that uh, hard disk back out since it seems knackered. I suppose I should try it in a USB enclosure, just in case, but it does seem pretty dead. And then there was a piece of plastic clipped along here which held the keyboard down, which I've already popped out. And then you can just lift up the keyboard and uh, you've kind of got access to the insides. Unfortunately, you can't release the floppy drive without taking the whole thing to bits. So that is going to be the next job. I also read that this thing has three batteries. So it has, uh, you know, the main battery. Then it's got a, a standby battery, which is another rechargeable nickel metal hydride, uh, which when it's in like standby or something, like with the, you know, it has to hold the contents of the RAM. Um, and it does something like a day or two days um, keeping it in standby, which is so weird that it can't do that off the normal battery, right? But uh, <laughs> I think that something like the main battery is 10 volts and the standby battery is 7. Um, and then it has some sort of 3 volt uh, CMOS battery. So I'll have to have a look through all those. Um, but just wanted to take this bit of vid before I took it any more to bits. And now I've done that, I can crack on and rip it to shreds. You can pop out the battery with the uh, pull the little tab. 
and slide that out. Hopefully I'll be able to um, to restore that battery or get a new one. There was this piece of plastic clipped in that retains the keyboard. So that's popped out. And there was also this end piece on the end of the hard disk here. Um, I can't remember exactly how I unclipped that, I just did. <laughs> So once the keyboard's free, you can flip that up. And then that gives you access to a couple of screws. There's one here and one down here that lets this grey piece come out. Oh, looks like I've managed to unclip the uh, touchpad as well. And then I think there's maybe one more screw over here to release this part that retains the hard disk and then the hard disk can be uh, slid out this way so it comes off its off its socket okay and that's about where I'd got to so the next step says we have to remove the optional memory module but I wonder if that's actually true Let's have a look. I reckon I can leave the RAM in there because I also don't need to take the PCMCA cards out. <laughs> right, removing the keyboard. Lift the keyboard to expose the keyboard connector. Disconnect the keyboard cable from the pressure plate connector. Yeah, it definitely shows lifting the tabs at the two ends of the connector up. There we go, that's released. Okay, so I think I already took maybe one screw out. Yeah, that one. I was hoping it would let me just pull the floppy drive out. So it says the only other two are uh, just at the back here. Oh my god, it's really loose. Hmm. Some might say suspiciously so. Oh, there was no screw in that hole. Um, okay. So it says I should be supporting the display, but I'm um, not exactly sure why or how. <laughs> right, disconnect the AccuPoint cable. Well, that is another really fiddly connector. There we go. Lift the battery mylar insulator. Now rounded out screws are a very good excuse for having a, a lot of different screwdriver bits because you can try and find the one that fits really securely. It's not bad. Let's try the slightly bigger one. That one is bad. Um, and it's having to go in a bit in a, of an angle here. Oh yeah, that feels like, that feels like a good fit. This is a... Uh, it's like a, I don't know, like a hundred piece mobile phone repair kit. So it has like all the different screw heads, including the, the triangle ones and security bits and God knows what. So you can do Apple and Nintendo and who knows what. And they're nice and thin and it comes with a, uh, a sort of extendable handle. So you can get into thin little spaces and things. So uh, it's quite good. I think it was only like, you know, 10... 15 quid or something on on Amazon it's quite good if you're gonna take apart <laughs> oh my goodness this is stuck <laughs> oh that, that just shredded it more hmm that is a really stuck screw 
I might have to drill it, which is not something I've particularly done before. So let's see if we can just destroy the head of this. I mean, I guess it should be soft because it's all corroded. Love to scatter metal around the inside of my computer. It's actually going pretty quick and easy. <laughs> Can't complain. It's almost there. Just going to uh, see if I can get a screwdriver to sort of finish it off. Oh no, that's, that's uh, it's certainly not not weak yet. Let's go. I think this segment's tougher because it's not corroded anymore and uh, it's kind of a lot wider and thicker. Oh well. Oh, the battery's becoming sad. Honestly, batteries are just a terrible idea all around. Cause nothing but trouble. Okay, let's treat the drill to a bit of charge. Maybe got a lip at the back still. I'm hoping the metal will get so thin it will just pop out before I have to uh, drill all the way into everything. Mm, not yet. <laughs> close, very close. I think I might be able to wiggle it out. <laughs> well, there, there goes a chunk of that screw. There we go. Hmm. Yes, yeah, quite acidy down there. So this is the standby battery, and this is the uh, CMOS battery. So I'll have to look into replacements for both of those, I guess. Or maybe I just don't need the standby battery, to be fair. Well, there's, there's definitely screws here in the top cover, so they must need to come out. Please, God, let them come out. Right, this is why it's saying support the screen, because it's a bit back heavy now. Okay, so it says there's six latches securing things. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so it says uh, latches... I think we can take that as clips. Let's get this door out of the way. I wonder if I can use some of these uh, mobile phone tools to help me unclip stuff. So it says there's a sensor. And if we had the posh version, we'd have a microphone as well as the display cable. But we do not have the posh version. But it does leave open the question of, well, could you fit a mic if the slot's there on the motherboard? I mean, it would be utterly pointless. <laughs> Not sure I'm going to do a lot of video calls on this thing. So is that that's the sensor. I guess that means the one that tells it if the lid's closed or not. Okay, made some progress. So I managed to slide the uh, the pick thing under here. You have to be a bit careful where there's a, a little lip here. But yeah, I managed to get it all the way along like like this. Didn't have to angle it or anything. Just slid it along and it popped some clips. So I think now we'll be able to pull this away. Just want to make sure I don't stretch the cable. Uh, maybe I'm going to have to go back upright. Mm. 
and something's uh, still still stuck. Might be the cable. Might be this part of the cable actually. Hmm. That uh, ferrule is quite well wedged in its little house. Uh, I sure don't want to pull hard on the on the cable. So let me uh, pop it with a screwdriver. <laughs> ah, you can't see. So the the ferrule is in there. I'm just going to see if I can pop it out of the plastic slot it's in without putting any pressure on the cable. There we go. Right. So that's off. Yeah, a tiny bit on that end. Let's see if that's... Yes, that's loosened it. Oh, there was another... Oh, <laughs> there's another wire for the speaker. I don't think the manual mentioned that. Okay, so removing the floppy drive. Should just have a couple of screws to take out. Yes, yeah, so it should be pop this and then the cable will slide out. There we go. Hmm, <laughs> well. I can see where the battery acid ended up. Okay, so I've opened the floppy drive up and the uh, the, the head movement was, was pretty stuck. Um, so I've given that a bit of an oil and uh, it, it's got a little bit of wiggle now. So hopefully that will move. Um, and the drive belt wasn't, wasn't on uh, to rotate the disc. But it's also very loose, um, so I'm, I don't think there's any way it's going to work. But what I would like to do is see if all the motors spin and stuff. Because if all it needs is a drive belt, then I can look for a drive belt. If the motors don't even move, then it's, it's probably a waste of time. Um, and this thing is tricky to open up. Uh, I, you know, I haven't really got it open enough to change the drive belt easily. I think I might be able to do it without completely opening it. Um... But yeah, let, let's see if this is going to be worth the hassle first. So I think we've got enough stuff plugged in still, just with the base, for it to attempt to boot. Um, it's really only missing the screen and the keyboard, uh, which I guess could be a problem because it could sit at F1 or something, but we'll see. So let's give it a power and see what happens. Right, keyboard and screen are connected again. Let's give this a go. Okay, that's some lights. <laughs> okay, yep, the whining noise definitely comes from the screen. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep, the motor definitely works. Now I need to find out how the hell you buy a new drive belt for a, what, 30 year old floppy drive probably? This is going to be fun. Oh, catch you next time.